Hello everyone, my name is Tri Le. Our team was assigned to build an application that could communicate between the Raspberry Pi and phones or web browsers. This communication must be based on matrix technology. If you don't know, matrix is a chatting technology with some features like end-to-end -end encryption and decentralization. This is a challenging and exciting project. Here are our team members. Hey everyone, Henry speaking here. I now go over a very general overview of our project. First off, I'd like to explain the problem that we work to solve. While there are numerous existing security companies that can already install cameras and run surveillance around the consumer's property, the consumer is often not guaranteed to be the only person who has access to the security data. When you're using a consumer security camera system, you're often sending your security data, like images and videos, over to their servers. Without any control over the security practices of these companies, as well as other potential risks such as security breaches or data leaks of these servers, you're often left guessing whether your data is completely out of reach from anyone else. So, with our project, we made sure that the user has full control over the entire system from the cameras to the server. End-to-end -end encryption of the data further ensures that you can fully control who has access to your security data. Now, in terms of the actual components of our system, it is split up into two sections, the front end and the back end. The front end is where you may interact with our security camera system, and this is done from a web application we developed. As for the back end, that's where the security data is managed and handled. Major components of the back end include the security cameras, the camera hub, as well as the matrix home server. These components will be explained in further detail later. My name is Fuk Nguyen, and I'm going to talk about the user of our application. Anyone who wants the information and data to be highly secure and safe can consider our application. The main target audience is our home owners and the business owners. Next, let's talk about the top four main features of our application. The first one is taking the snapshot of what the designated camera currently sees. The second one is automatic video recordings via motion detection. The next one is manual video recordings by taking the user input. And the last one is viewing the recorded video history. Let's move on to the first feature specifically. The first one is taking the snapshot of what the designated camera currently sees. The user sends a request that specifies which camera to take the snapshot of and then the snapshot will be sent back to the user from the camera view. The second one is automatic video recordings via motion detection, leverages motion detection functionality from motion eye and the recordings will be stored in the camera hub. Hello everyone, my name is Tung Lin and I'm in the front end team for the open shot camera uh, project so today i will talk about the uh, some feature of the uh, uh, camera so in the feature 3 i have the manual video recording so in this feature the user can command a camera to begin recording for a given duration and after that the camera will start the recording in the camera hub next uh, in the feature 4, we have the viewing recording history. So the user may check the recording history by given the day and time range. So the application will respond with on the video file within the given range. So next, uh, we have planned to do some future implementation. So uh, in the future, if we have time, we can do the larger feature. So, uh, for the uh, camera, can allow the notification. So, uh, uh, the camera will send the notification to the phone, the message, or some app such as the Telegram. So, next, the motion activation and and the fade detection. So, for the smaller feature, 
we have planned to do a long video history we will do the cloud storage and if we have more time we can do the two-way audio so that's all of the feature we have right now and in the future feature we will do some some more feature hi everyone I am Ming and I will talk about our product architecture first and foremost our product include two main parts the first one is backend and the second one is frontend the backend include the Raspberry Pi it is the most important part of the backend it is responsible for recording the video whenever it detects the motion at its end it will send a signal to magic server and push down to front end. Our front end is a magic client. It's continually listening from magic server. So whenever the magic server has a message, the magic client can receive it, decode it, and display for the user. We also can configure the back end for front end. Our product also allow multiple users sharing a same camera and a main user can invite as well as to kick out another user. For our development process, we followed an agile development environment. There were two week sprints in which features were worked out and added. We would have meetings with our sponsor every two weeks as well to go over the advancements. We used Jira for listing features and keeping track of them. And we used GitHub for our code repository for our development. The group was broken up into two teams, the front-end team and the back-end team. The front-end team focused on building the web application and custom matrix client. The back-end team focused on the camera hub and the associated hardware and software. All right, next I'm gonna talk about what you need to actually set up a camera system like this for yourself. The first thing I'm gonna go over is cameras. For cameras, you can use virtually any off-the-shelf consumer-grade camera that can transmit over a network and act as a network camera, such as this one. Or you can also use something like a Raspberry Pi. Um, this is a Raspberry Pi Zero. You've got um, all sorts of options with a camera like this. You can use any type of camera that's available for a Raspberry Pi, such as uh, ones with um, higher quality lenses or even night vision. So you get a lot of options with the uh, Raspberry Pi setup. The one disadvantage is right now, they're a little harder to find, but under normal situations, they're very inexpensive and they're open source. Additionally, you can modify them to have uh, other sorts of features or set up other sensors or things like that that you would like with it. In addition to the actual cameras, the other piece of hardware you'll need is a computer to act as the hub. In this case, I just used a Raspberry Pi 4. Now let's take a look at the software or the front end of this project and how you'll actually interact with it. So this is the login page. Um, this is where you'll put in your information for your Matrix Home server, as well as the username and password that you've set up to work with it. Once you log in, you're taken to the room selection. Now what the rooms are is they're a way for you to kind of set up different zones or places for cameras. Essentially each camera hub that you have will correspond to a different room. So for instance, if you have cameras set up at your home, you can view your cameras all from your home in one place. Or for example, if you have cameras at your place of work, you can set them up and have them directed to their own room. These rooms can then be shared with other people. Other rooms can be shared with you. So for instance, if your parents or, or grandparents have some cameras set up at their house, you can watch them for them or also get the videos for them and keep an eye on the, their house for them. Once you select a room, you're taken to the home page and I'll let my teammate explain the rest. After going to the room, we're in homepage. 
This is where all the motion detections are captured. Once the camera detects the motions, it will capture a video and send it back to the camera hub. The camera hub then send a thumbnail of the video to this homepage first, and then eventually it will uploading the video to the matrix server and then appears in this homepage. For testing a real life scenario, uh, we are setting two Raspberry Pi cameras in this resident house. One for the front door and one for the garage. In the upcoming moment, our team member is going to walk from the front door to the back of the garage to demonstrate the motion capture of each camera. Eventually, we will see a, thumbnails, a few thumbnails showing up which indicates that the cameras are capturing movement of our team members. We can also see the exact time and date of each video shown under the thumbnail and what camera is also is recording. We can also download the video for our local storage or delete it as we want to. Next, I'm going to be talking about the request page. This is a place where user can request a snapshot, record a video, check the camera configurations, or request a list of recording. First, let's go to snapshot. With the snapshot, it will send the request to take a snapshot to the camera hub and the camera hub will reply back by sending a snapshot back to the first page, which was taken from the camera with the request from at the moment of request. For the court video, same mechanism as snapshot. We send a request to record a video to the camera hub. Then the camera hub will send reply by sending back to the request page, which was taken from the camera with request. Record video comes with an amount of seconds, starting at the moment of request. For camera config, this requests the camera hub to send an updated list of cameras that are currently in the household. For list recording, we can send a request to the camera hub to get a list of recordings including motion detect videos and manual recording video. Here I will set a time to a couple of minutes back to get the motion detect video. I can also try to set a starting time from May 9th at 6.09 p.m. to get a motion detect video. And yes, we have a video that was recorded at May 9th at 6.08 p.m. Next, I'm going to be talking about the profile page where user can manage their profile status. They can change their profile features. Or on the right hand side, there's a setting button. We have the options to change the name, invite users, kick users, ban users or unban users. Or the last one is to options to leave the current room. Under the detail of the accounts, we have the current rooms, user IDs, and numbers of people are current in the room. You can also see other room in the list and hover to see hover the mouse to see who's in that room. Lastly, you can have to change to another room when clicking the change room button. Well, that's a pretty good rundown of the front end of our software. There's not much to show with the back end because it just runs as a Linux service. So let's move on to obstacles and setbacks that we ran into. 
The first is that the Raspberry Pi Foundation broke their camera support for their original camera stack in November 2021. That means that anything that was written for the old camera stack couldn't wouldn't work on the newest operating systems that uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation was putting out after November 2021. Um, this resulted in a change of scope and focus for the back end of the project. Second major issue is that the library which Matrix uses for encryption, the OLM library, had many compatibility issues with various versions of Python, Linux, JavaScript, React, React Native, Node.js, Basically, all of the Matrix SDKs caused compatibility problems for both the back and front end of our project. Another issue is the documentation for the Matrix SDKs is fairly lacking. There isn't a lot of programming examples, and many of them are poorly supported. Another problem our team faced is we lacked anybody with um, a lot of mobile programming experience. So. That combined with the compatibility issues we were facing caused a lot of headaches. Finally, remote working has proven a challenge for our team with many teammates having various schedules and having trouble finding time to collaborate and work together. So what kind of lessons have we learned with this? When committing to specific technologies, uh, existing frameworks, it's important to thoroughly look into these compatibility issues very early on because you can end up finding out that what you wanted to do is completely infeasible and you need to change and adapt and change the scope of the project. Another thing that proved very useful for us was when we were able to find documentation on the frameworks that we were using to just spend a lot of time researching them and digging deeper into how they work and their underlying technologies and that really enabled us to be successful. Feedback from our sponsor was focused around these challenges and our ability to adapt. Quote, this was an early prototyping effort, so there were a lot of unknown unknowns at the beginning of the project. Nevertheless, the team did a great job dealing with uncertainty and adapting when our initial ideas didn't work out. We planned to use the Raspberry Pis as a standalone camera that would record video, encrypt, and upload to the server but a combination of incompatible updates to the device's firmware, OS, matrix libraries from the past year made it impossible to do all these things in a single system, so the team found a way to make it work using multiple Raspberry Pi systems. Another example is that the initial spec called for a mobile application as the client side, but the team had very little experience with the native mobile development, so we agreed to shift to a web-first approach using React that could later be packaged up into a mobile app using a technology like Cordova. So, that just about covers what we accomplished in the span of the last two terms, along with experiences we gained along the way. And to wrap up, we would like to thank our sponsor, Charles Wright, for giving us the opportunity to work with them on this project. While this project did challenge us at times, we're glad to have helped in turning what was once your vision into a reality. Lastly, we would like to thank you for watching this video. We appreciate you taking the time to hear about our work.